I was getting married and I just finished a long tour and I felt like I just promised myself I'm going to take some time and not fill the day with the next thing, you know, not rush into the next thing, which I tend to do all the time. And then the phone's ringing with Fincher saying, do you want to score this film? And he sent me the script and I read it and the script was great. And I just, I, this new adult version of me <laughs> said, I've got to live up to the promise I just made to myself. And I, I said to David, look, I, it's not you, it's not the film, it's not the material. It's just, to do this right, I have to immerse myself in it. I don't know how to do this. And I'm, I don't feel like I'm in a place right now where I can give it my best. And if I do, I'm not being honest with what I just said I would do for myself. Please respect it. And I'm, it's not you. I totally get it. I totally get it. And then what happened? I get sleep for a couple of days and I can't quit thinking about that, of course, because I feel like I've let him down and I feel like I've copped out, you know. And a few weeks went by and then I called him up and said, hey, I, one more time, I just want to reiterate. <laughs> It wasn't you, okay? And it wasn't the material. I just really didn't feel like I was able to pull this off. And I said, if it ever comes up again, if there's the next film, please keep me in mind. Because, no, I'm, f I'm still fucking waiting for you to do this film. <laughs> when can you come over? You know? And, uh, so funny. yeah, and I went and then, then we started. <laughs> and, uh, the rest is history. Yeah. What was the experience like? I mean, did, did first of all, just from a technical perspective, does he say, these are the scenes I want music, this is where the cue goes, or do you watch the movie and decide where the music goes? With Fincher, and I didn't realize it's this at the time until I was around other composers a few months later in award season craziness that I never, never crossed my mind that was even a thing, you know? But with Fincher, it's really and still the greatest collaborator one could have in that area because he's carved out a space where he's fought to make sure that this camp of people that are making the film are not answering to producers or studios or any interest other than his, which is let's make the very best thing we can. Mm -hmm. And the team he's assembled with his editors and sound guys, and they are great. And when you around them, you feel like, wow, I got to keep up. Not not in an intimidating way. In a, everyone's riffing off each other, and you're watching you this like thing get team. better and better. Yeah. yeah. And certainly, there was a feeling of I don't want to be the one that fucks the movie up because I'm don't know what I'm do <laughs> doing. But uh, what David will do, he started that process off saying, I'm thinking that. It, might feel a little electronic, maybe. And very, very few little breadcrumbs. And what had happened before, what led to him asking uh, Atticus and I to work on this was I'd made a record under Nine Inch Nails called Ghosts, which was just an experiment, which was I enjoy arranging music at times and trying to evoke emotional reactions but the only time i get to do it is supporting a song and trying to arrange it in a way that sounds interesting so i came up with an idea i had alan Mulder over and i said let's just do this every day let's make a new piece of music and whatever it is at the end of the day we're done this is an eno-esque type of thing let's start with either a photo or a feeling or a phrase and let's just make it that and so Here's a picture of the end of a pier in a swamp in New Orleans, and it's dusk, and it feels Tom Waitsy and just feels kind of hot and humid and slightly sensual and almost menacing. What's that sound like? Not sound effects, but what 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 would feel right? That that we need to score that idea. Say a movie like David Cronenberg's Dead Ringers 
fills me with dread. I think it's a great film of just feeling like something bad is going to happen. Nothing good's going to come out of this. That feeling of dread, make a song for that. And it was just a fun thing that felt like no pressure. It felt the opposite of writing songs, where it's just experimental and it was a chance to try different canvases and play around in different areas that I wouldn't probably get to in Nine Inch Nails' normal songwriting mode. And put that out as an instrumental double album. That caught Fincher's ear, and he had tempted in some of that for Social Network. And because I said, why? Why are you bugging me to do that? <laughs> yeah. He's like, because you have the language of being able to emotionally enhance the story I'm trying to tell. I'm not saying make it sound like that record, but I can tell from these experiments that's the textures and the, and the emotional resonance I'm looking for. Then I'm faced with that dilemma I mentioned earlier of how do you score a thing with talking and once I kind of realized, we, we tried this strategy. Rather than call up Hans Zimmer and ask him, how do you start? We, thought, we had a little time, and we spent two weeks or so. Let's think about this film. We've seen a rough cut of half of it. We have the script. We've talked to Fincher about what story he's trying to tell the feeling he's trying to convey. He's not trying to make it feel like a, a comfortable college shenanigans story. It's meant to feel more important than that. Stakes, emotional stakes and gravitas is meant to feel a bit more weighty. And then I just started daydreaming and improvising and wrote about eight or nine, ten maybe, five minute pieces of music that evolved. Here's, here's a theme that kind of goes from mild and benign to feeling like clouds are creeping in to something, whatever it might be. Never the story. All of them had a kind of feel like, you could put it on and listen to it and it felt pleasant and, and it didn't feel like a loop. But it was essentially exploring different tonal variations of different musical things. And I sent that to him and I said, just see if this isn't for a scene. This isn't for this part. This isn't the whatever. But this feels like what I hear your movie is the world of it. And it's also testing him to see instrumentally, musically, tonally, are these things resonating? Some were more synthetic, some were more organic sounding. You know, just to see where, because he's... Incredibly smart. He can pretty much any aspect of making a film. He can tell you more about the lens of the camera than the cinematographer or the fucking, you know. With music, it's more of a shapes and he's not, it's not real specific in a good way. Anyway, we heard back almost immediately like, listen, I'm going to try cutting some of this into a film and in a couple days, do you want to come see a quick cut of it it's going to have your music in it, though. Sure. So we walk into some theater somewhere. Where it's, I'm sitting right behind Brad Pitt watching a rough cut of this film with the music we just wrote kind of tried in different spots. And it was an almost religious experience. Like to, to hear, and I know it's obvious, but it, to be in the control seat for a minute and to hear something you did see how much it affects the way if something plays and the way, the way you feel watching it. I was hooked, you know, just with the making me aware of the emotional power of music and in, in the role of a film where you're experiencing a thing, to know how much you can control one response to that thing and how, how varied it can be by what goes in there was, it was just exciting to see. And Absolutely. from that point on, then it became much more traditional. Now we know this kind of thing works in that kind of part of the film. Now let's get in and really start doing it. Once we had a, the breadcrumbs started to take root and seed. The, you know. the more often you do it, do you feel like you always get better at doing it? Generally, yes. But what it's become, you know, we, we did that film, the process of doing it, the pressure of being in a 
foreign situation with people who are great <laughs> yeah. and you like them as people and you want to keep up and then realizing you are keeping up and you're inspiring them and seeing it all come together on a film that is really good and also watching the film fincher has an uncanny way of okay he somehow managed to zone in on taking three frames out of that and tightening this one thing up and he's seen it how many hundreds of times and helped write it and filmed it and picked between 100 takes of that thing and composited this but still remains objective enough to incrementally nudge it forward to where undeniably it is getting better and as he's dealing with you on this one scene He's also dealing with the other hundred things around it, and it's it's pretty impressive. Anyway, we finish that film, and then weirdly it starts to get accolades, and then people are saying, you might get nominated for an Oscar. I was like, it's not possible. <laughs> yeah. It's just like if you yeah. decide to run a race, and you just won the, you know, yeah. how, can't it, be. it can't be possible. Yeah. I'm it must be a fluke <laughs> and it felt good through that whole process but i think in as you endlessly had to promote the film and be in round tables with other composers that you know but know of but don't know and you're hearing how fortunate the an un, untypical the fincher situation is really reframed kind of experience we had it was it was great 